<laughs> hi everyone, uh, welcome to NW Dog for November. Um, hi everyone on the live stream. We're now start properly and stop talking about whiskey. Um, we're going to do some drinking news today and then we're going to have a talk from Ruth about how to have ideas and talk about them. Um, so, first up, we go through some events. Uh, Drinkle Camp Scotland was cancelled. No, no. <laughs> not, not enough whiskey for audience participation yet, obviously. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure why. It looks like maybe they haven't done quite enough to promote the event. Um, I know that we started promoting it here quite late, so maybe we were late being aware of it. I think they only had about 10 or 11 submissions for their conference, and normally they have three tracks going on all day, so they were short on submissions as well as ticket sales. So um, I'm not going to read too much into that about being worried about the future of Drupal in Scotland, um, but maybe that wasn't promoted uh, as much as it could have been. Um, but this event is definitely not going to be cancelled, so who knows that we're having an unconference in two weeks. I do. Don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming to the unconference? <laughs> um, cool. Uh, it's going to start at 9, or registration is going to start at 9, and we'll have the opening session at 10. So if you haven't registered yet, please do register so we know how many people are coming. Um, and there's more details on the website. Um, Drupal Camp in Munich, who's been to Munich? If you've not been to Munich, you should go. This is a good excuse. They have good beer. They have good Drupal. Um, so that's going on. Uh, there's one in Switzerland. Who's been to Davos? I have nothing to say about Davos in Switzerland, but it could be good. Um, and Northern Lights, they just got a website up and tickets are going to go on sale soon. They're not quite sure how big the event's going to be, so this is going to be really good. Like a lot of the core developers are talking about going to this. I think it's going to be like actually quite a big event, so I really would jump on this. It's going to be awesome. Who's thinking about going to this? You might meet Björk doing some that. Um, Drupal Camp London. Who went to Drupal Camp London last year? Was it awesome? Uh, so that's going to happen again. It will be at least as awesome. I am reliably informed. Uh, I think it's, I've been informed it's going to be more awesome. Um, and they're going to start opening their call for papers. So if you're inspired by today about talking and the Uncom, get a submission in for Drupal Camp London. I think like last year they did the um, submissions on an anonymous basis when they were selecting what to do. So if you're worried about not getting selected because you haven't taught before, if your submission is good enough and they use the same process, then you may well get selected. So really encourage everyone to apply for that if you're thinking about talking at a camp too. And they should have a new website up next week. So if you go and have a look at Drupal Camp London at the moment, it shows last year's site, but they're hoping to get it up next week. Um, Super Camp Norfolk, apparently might shift in date. I was talking to Rachel today, so this might go forward or backwards, so just keep an eye on that. Don't make any travel plans if you're thinking about going to Norfolk. Who likes Norfolk? I could do. We've got like boats and pubs and, and drinkful people. Um, other things that are going on in Manchester. There is the Manchester Linux user group and the free software group, and they're doing a pub quiz all about Linux. So if you want to learn a load about Linux, or if you think you really know about everything about Linux, um, go to that. I don't know if there's any prizes. May or may not be. Um, AWS User Group North are going to do a series of introductory events. Um, I'm not sure what the topics are going to be, but they're going to do them every two weeks. And these are like half eight in the morning, so you can go just before you go to work, depending on where you work and where they are. Um, but like some introductory topics to do with using Amazon Web Services. So if any of you like staging people on that, that might be interesting. And Manchester Front End Development Group are going to do a thing called Dan Het Unplugged. I had no idea what the hell this was going to be, but then I clicked through to uh, Simon Owen's blog on this, and actually looks really, really interesting. Uh, Dan Het is a digital artist, and he's going to do a kind of free form session like that. Um, I'm going to try and get to that if I can. It looks like it's going to be like really exciting. 
What else is going on? Uh, we had a new patch release for Drupal, uh, 8.2.2. It's not a security update, so if you're already on 8.2, don't worry. But if you've been suffering from um, file loss, there's some important fixes to do with that. Uh, Drupal 8.2 and previous could be a bit greedy about deleting files I didn't think were referenced enough. If you've been suffering from that on production, uh, this patch release will help you as well as having a bunch of other stuff. So take a look at the release notes on Drupal.org. See if you want to be on that. So it's okay. Yeah, so if you've got like uploaded files, Drupal keeps a reference of how many times I've referenced, and I think earlier versions of Drupal before 8.2.2 on the 8 branch could be a bit overzealous about deleting files when it's thought they weren't being used anymore. So some sites have been suffering in production with mysterious issues around that, so that should be fixed. There's lots of notes on that on the release notes. So that looked like the most important thing in that patch release. Uh, there are, of course, like other stuff that's gone in. Um, News on Drupal Core. Who's used Simple Test in Drupal 7 and later? So expecting more hands than that. Uh, like if you started to do test driven development with Drupal 7, Simple Test was the way that you did it. It had a testing module that you enabled with Core. There's Simple Test in Drupal 8 as well. There's a mixture of Simple Test and PHP unit based tests. And there's been a policy decision that that's going to be phased out and Simple Test will be completely deprecated as per Drupal 9. So it's kind of interesting to see now the kind of things that will be different in Drupal 9 already, even though there's like not much indication of how long it's going to take before we actually start to have a Drupal 9, we start to know some of the uh, policy decisions that are going in on that. The other thing that's been really interesting in the past month is that there's been loads of stuff that's come out in um, Contra uh, with a first release for Drupal 8. So it's like real sh showing the momentum that's going on with Drupal 8 now. Uh, so some themes, um, Lock has come out with a, a two release, which is a way of securely stashing things like API keys outside of your website. So if your website's compromised, you don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about storing them in source control and solving that problem. Uh, it's config logs, so you can actually log config changes and stuff like that. Last mail, URL redirects, really important module. Features has got a new release. They're not using features in Drupal 8. Um, add to calendar, which is like a field format of the date, so it automatically gives you an option to add that to like um, calendar in a kind of iCal format. Uh, truncate format, which is a jQuery format, so for truncating text a bit more nicer than default CSS. So important cache stuff has come in around uh, some of the components that we bring in from Drupal. More themes, CSS ground, which is like an Instagram like set of image filters that you can apply. Uh, optimizing Neo4j. Uh, fixed text link formatter, so you can have a fixed text link for uh, different things, uh, footnotes, loads of stuff. All this stuff has all come out. This is just stuff that's gone into like full release, not stuff that's gone into like a new point release, but just stuff that's come out for the first time or for a new major branch release. Um, just absolutely tons of stuff. I didn't realize quite how much it was when I started putting it up on the slide, so uh, obviously we can't go through all of these. And obviously, that edit didn't quite work. Um, Adbag's gone into, everyone's used Adbag, right? So that's now got a 2.0 release. Uh, menu force is really useful forcing items to be placed in the menu, uh, depending on no type. Uh, contact emails lets you um, override the contact form emails that get sent. Term case is actually really useful if you have free tagging, because that forces your tags to be in a specific case, which means if you've ever had duplicate tags where you've got free tagging and users put the same tag in slightly different cases, uh, you won't get that anymore. Um, loads of stuff, loads of stuff has gone in. And this isn't, this isn't everything. If I couldn't actually quite work out what a module did, I didn't put it in the slides. So we'll publish these slides if you want to go through and easily check what kind of stuff's coming out. But I just thought it's really interesting this month just to see the amount of stuff that came out in um, Contra and got its first kind of proper Drupal 8 release. Dreaditor. I think last month we talked about Dreaditor and we said about Dreaditor going into um, D.O. So Dreaditor was previously a Chrome and Firefox plugin. It's had to have a complete rewrite uh, to be still a Firefox plugin. 
because of changes that Firefox made to the requirements of how you had to structure your plugins, and it really wasn't worth it. So that was going into D.0. Unfortunately, the guy who's driving that, Mark Carver, doesn't have time to work on it anymore. So like, he can review patches and pull requests and stuff like that. But there are still some outstanding things that we need other people to get involved with. So if you do uh, want to get involved in that, if you think that's interesting, Threadless is a really important tool. All the core devs use it. Um, and it's really useful if you're working with Contrib as well. If you want to get involved in that, you can hit that issue and see what's going on in these updates. Right, that's all I was going to talk about now. Uh, next up, we have Ruth, who is going to talk about how to have ideas and talk about them. Thank you. Um, Did you like that? Yeah. You guys bear with me. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to make your slides do what I want it to do. So, live stream guys, you're going to have to bear with me a sec as well. Talk amongst yourself, guys. We're there for two seconds. Let's see if I can get this to do what I want it to do. So. I do. <laughs> okay, do you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna wing it. If it goes wrong, it'll go wrong. It's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, thanks very much for having me, first of all. I'm really happy to be here, so thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about ideas and how to have them. It sounds like quite an abstract idea. Trust me, it isn't. It's actually a lot easier than you think. All it takes is a bit of practice. That's me. Look at me in that photo. I'm reading a book because I'm a writer. Isn't that great? So I'm a writer by trade. I'm a copywriter at Access, where Irina works as well, where Jake works. Um, it is my job most of the time to come up with ideas and sell them in a convincing way. My manager might argue that I don't do this, but that is what I'm paid to do. So that's why I feel like I have some authority to talk about ideas with you today. So that's what I do. Uh, in order to talk to you about ideas, I want to talk to you about Tintin, obviously. So Tintin was written by a guy called Herjay. Has anyone ever read Tintin out of interest? Tintin fans, this is a massive help. Thank you guys. Okay, so. Tintin, written by Herjo, as you know, uh, before he was writing Tintin into bed, he was having all of these really distressing, horrible, nightmare dreams, right? So he was imagining that he was in these horrible, white open spaces, and he kept having like skeletons jump out at him, and it was really awful. So he goes to a psychoanalyst, because you know, back in the day, he didn't bet on Twitter, he goes to a psychoanalyst. So he goes to a psychoanalyst, and the psychoanalyst is like, right, okay, Herjo. The problem here is that you are writing Tintin. The best way to solve this is to stop writing Tintin. Her Jay's like, you're fucking crazy, there's no way I'm doing that, I fucking love writing Tintin. So instead, <laughs> he decided to do Tintin in Tibet, and it's considered one of his masterpieces, and it, it is brilliant. Like, first of all, look at that illustration, that's pretty badass, right? And if he listened to that psychoanalyst, we would not have Tintin in Tibet, we wouldn't have loads of other things. So ideas can seem nightmarish at first, and the idea of getting up and talking in front of people can seem really nightmarish, Trust me, it isn't. It's actually loads of fun if you get into it. So think about her, Jane. He had to deal with horrible nightmare and shit, and he took gone on with it. So if a weird illustrator can do it, you can do it. So what I want to talk about first of all are the fundamentals of ideas. What is an idea? What does it mean to have ideas? Oh, we got some more coming in. Come in, take a seat. <laughs> it's okay. You got to the good bit. So. What is an idea? An idea is a noun, and I'm going to say it's a noun because I'm a big fan of language and it's important we know what it is. It is a noun. The first definition of an idea is a thought or suggestion as to a possible course of action. There are lots of different definitions for idea, but it's important you think about that. Go back to the fundamentals of the word when you get stuck on something. I don't know how it works with Drupal because I've got limited knowledge from what Irina has seen to me. So, talking about language, because that's what I know, uh, a thought is a suggestion as to a possible course of action. Another thing, an idea is an opinion or belief. This is really important when you think about doing your talks because sometimes a talk can be you solving a problem. Sometimes it can just be you riffing on something you think is important. That's totally valid. Just get up and talk some shit. That's what I'm doing now. It's loads of fun. So it's fine. Just do it. And the idea is also the aim or purpose. So when I deal with a creative idea, usually the idea is actually the purpose of the brief. So I'll get given something, I'll get given something called a single-minded proposition. 
And then I'm like, what's the idea that comes from that? And you have to deal with it. Really, people who are dealing with ideas and are actually about to sit down to write something, no an idea is a pain in the ass. It's not actually any of those things, is it? It's a massive pain in the fucking ass. And it's really annoying. And it's also something that only occurs to you just before you're going to sleep. I totally know it happens to me all the time and it's really annoying. So ideas that make you lose sleep, but it's totally fine. There's another thing you should bear in mind that Arthur C. Clarke said. So this guy was like, new ideas pass through three periods. It can't be done. This is the stage we're at now. It's totally fine. I feel like it's an overwhelming thing. Trust me, it isn't. It probably can be done, but it's not worth doing, so I'm just not going to do it. Play Xbox instead. That's totally a valid response, but don't do that. I knew it was a good idea all along. That's where we're going to get today. It's going to be awesome, so don't worry. So when you're thinking about your idea, I know one of the most scary things that you'll come again, up against is your own voice. And that was someone in your voice, someone inside your head that's saying, this is a load of shit, no one wants to hear about it. It's so not true. If your idea does any of these things, then your idea is totally valid. If your idea excites people, more importantly, if it excites you. If your idea doesn't excite you, no one's going to give a shit. So make sure you care about your idea. If it has value, if it's shareworthy, when I say shareworthy, I mean that in a different sense to how it works in my work. So for me, shareworthy literally means people want to share it on social media or people want to talk about it. With you guys, shareworthy can actually mean a fairly similar thing. But also, shareworthy means something that people go away talking about and they may end up making a module because of it. That's what shareworthy means in this context. It creates conversations. Lots of great ideas create conversation. I'll show you some examples later that really make me laugh and I see why they're wonderful. And also it solves a problem. You guys are literally professional problem solvers. You know how to solve problems better than anyone else. So you're already doing that anyway. So for all you know, you've already got the idea. So now we've defined what an idea is. We're going to talk about where ideas come from. We're going to talk about inspiration. So this is something that I get asked a lot as a writer. Outside of work, I also make theatre. And one of the things that people always ask me is, where does the idea for your play come from? I don't fucking know. I don't know where the ideas come from. They just come from everywhere. The ideas come from things like conferences. You guys are really fortunate in the fact that the thing that you work with is rich in other people talking about it. And you can be those people talking about it. And that's a really lovely thing. You go to conferences all the time. I really was talking about an awesome one in Iceland the other day. Like, that sounds great. Go to Iceland, go to the conference, you've got a load of ideas. It's awesome. Reading, I, you know, we're of above average intelligence in this room. I'm pretty sure some of you guys read, and so if you read, that's going to inspire you. Films, obviously. Social media. Yes, it can be a massive time suck and really distract you, but actually, it can be really inspiring. Loads of good shit happens in social media, which we'll talk about a bit later on as well. The news. The news is a very broad one, but the news can also mean things like news specific to your world, so it can be things to do with Drupal. Obviously things like the election threw up some interesting things that have happened recently. Uh, in fact, you can see it on the website now because we fixed the blog before we came. Liam wrote a presidential edition of Liam's Websites of the Month, so if you want to see some mad shit that happened to do with tech in the presidential debate, you can see it now on the Access website. Go take a look. And obviously music. Music inspires me as well. I don't know if you guys need to code with music. How do you guys feel when you're coding? Do you feel like you have to have music on? Do you hate having music on? What do you prefer to do? No music. No music. Is anyone else like, I absolutely have to have a belt on? Yeah. You need to have total silence. OK, that's cool. Sometimes I really need music, and sometimes I don't. <laughs> exactly. It can be really distracting, to be fair, so do good. So, in order to put this into a bit of context, and also because I don't know a lot about the world, but I'm hoping this is of some use, we'll talk about some shit that inspires me, because that's all I got. So, something that really inspires me is women's rights. That image is a, a picture of a load of great women in Soho, in London, I want to say. They were protesting about the fact they were trying to pass a law to do with sex workers' rights, and they all got pissed off about it, so they went and protested for them. But the reason why I find women's rights really inspiring, obviously it's something that directly affects me. But because I had this, I had this mad conversation with a friend of mine the other day, it was a couple of years ago, because I did it for a blog that I used to run. And we were talking about sex workers, and we were saying, is it a feminist thing, is it not a feminist thing? It's an argument I've had with a lot of women and a lot of men. I've never really come to a satisfying conclusion. However, because of that conversation, I then went away and found two sex workers. And I said to them, I want to talk about what you do. 
can I please have your time and answer some of the questions that have bothered me for a long time, really? And these two absolute babes said yes for no reason. The only reason they said yes is because I asked, which I think is really lovely of them. So I got to talk to these two lovely Australian sex workers and I turned it into a post that was basically like, all the things you think about sex workers are wrong and this is why. And it was great. And that, that, whole, that whole idea just came from having a drunken conversation with these beautiful people and it leading to me writing a blog post. And then some people read that blog post, they liked some of that blog post, they didn't like some of it. It's all totally valid, it's conversation. So it's solving part of the brief of what we were talking about. It created a conversation, as well as just being my opinion, which I say a lot. So another thing that really inspires me is something called Copywriters Unite. You guys have also got a lot of hashtags for the stuff that you do on social media. My version is something called Hashtag Copywriters Unite. This was set up by a woman called Vicky Ross, who is a very famous copywriter from London. She also set up the thing, things you hear in agencies. Have you guys ever heard of that? You've heard of that. It's basically a really wonderful hashtag that's a short code to cut through all the bullshit of agencies, which we hear a lot of. So it'd be like the dumb shit that people say to each other in agencies, like, I like that said, but could it be more S? It's genuinely one of the things that appears in that feed. What the fuck does that mean? No one knows, but it's stuff that we say to each other in agencies. So she came up with the idea to do that hashtag. She also came up with this thing called Copyright Unite. It's a very simple idea. Anytime someone pisses you off because they've come back to you about a bit of copy you've written and they, did, they gave you feedback that wasn't feedback, you can post that feedback on Twitter and be like, Copyright Unite, what the fuck are they talking about? It's really, really therapeutic. Or you'll see like a bit of copy that you think is incredible and you'll be like, holy shit guys, we nailed it. And then you'll be like, copyright is right, it's really lovely. So that's really cool and it's actually turned into something very similar to this, where a load of people turn up, they get drunk and they talk about copy, uh, potentially, I don't know. And then they also then get to talk about it to each other about the work that they love, which is great, it's exactly like this. So that very simple idea of why isn't there a hashtag to talk about all the dumb shit that gets said to us as copywriters turned into a real life meet and greet, which is great, which is just what this is. So, most importantly, you could have lots of ideas, but you don't actually know if they're a good idea. So hopefully, if this works, I'm gonna show you what a good idea looks like. And it looks something like a magical enchilada, hopefully. I don't know if it's gonna work. Potentially not. Um, anyway, I can still talk you through it. So, Exploding Kittens is the card game that was invented by a guy who is a cartoonist called The Oatmeal, this guy. Uh, and he got together with these two guys who are gamers. They're guys that are tech people. And they decided to make something called Exploding Kittens, which is great. And it's basically a card game, and Exploding Kittens enables you to carry out ridiculous scenarios, and the trump card is an Exploding Kitten card. There's loads of mad shit that goes on in it, like there's a diffuse card where you can distract the cat with a laser pointer, you can talk it through therapy, or you can give it like catnip sandwiches. There's loads of mad stuff going on in this game. But what this idea basically shows us is if you get a bunch of people together and talk about something, something really weird happens and it's really good and everyone should do it and it's really lovely. Like there's an OCA joke wizard, who has a need for that? And these guys just got together and made it happen and it's crazy. Loads of stuff. There's a not safe for work version as well, which I really want to see. So this is like the version you can play with your kids, which is great. But there's also like a scary version. So yeah, it's like completely insane and wonderful. Um, maximum funness. See, they've even got great copy going on. But yeah, and it's a really wonderful idea that came out of seemingly nowhere. Just these guys' imagination. And more importantly, this was a Kickstarter project and it broke Kickstarter history. It was the most successful Kickstarter of all time when it came out, which is crazy. It's literally a bunch of dudes that decided to explode some kittens and everyone was like, I want to play that game. So everyone did. And you can buy it now and it looks amazing. So ideas are a great thing, even if they seem completely fucking random at the time. Let's see if this wants to play now. So, moving on from exploding kittens to advertising, which is where I come from. So, uh, the Chip Shop Awards. Has anyone ever heard of the Chip Shop Awards? Anyone? Chip Shop Awards? So, the Chip Shop Awards is basically a bunch of frustrated creatives that made an award for themselves. 
So the problem with being a creative is you have to answer to clients. So these guys were like, fucking get rid of the clients and let's make an award where we get to make whatever we want. And they've got completely insane categories. So they decided this, for example, is an advert, Specsavers didn't agree to this, they just decided to make it, is an advert that won the award for best campaign without a headline. What's the line that goes with that? Anyone? What's Specsavers tagline? Yeah, that's Specsavers. And they came up with that. I think that's brilliant. Like, should have gone Specsavers and hung the fucking advert upside down. Like, that's all they submitted and I saw it and I was like, damn, that's good, that's so clever. And there's loads of them. There's, there's a category in the Chip Shop Awards called the award most likely to get us up shit creek. And that's just a bunch of creatives getting together and being smart asses. And they turned it into an actual awards now. And you have to pay like a hundred quid a go. Someone made a hundred pounds just to have loads of other creatives agree with them that they're clever. Like that's brilliant. So yeah, ideas seem extremely random, but actually they can be great. So they come from the most random of places and you should totally embrace that. So now we talked about what an idea is, where you get inspiration from, exploding kittens. We're now going to move on to how to hone your ideas and actually turn it into something. Because we want to walk away with something tangible, this is kind of pointless. So when I sit down with an idea, usually it's a single kind of proposition that I've been given for work that is rare, but when they do turn up, they're kind of nice. This is what I do. I'm not saying this works for everyone, but it definitely works for me. First of all, you've got to treat yourself to some stationery. I'm a copywriter and we get crazy about notebooks and animal shaped highlighters. I'm telling you, embrace it, it'll make you feel loads better. If you're sitting down to write some code, you're like, God, this is fucking hard. If you've got an animal shaped highlighter in your hand, you're going to be like, this is loads of fun. Telling you, do it, embrace it, it's really good. Then you need to start an ideas book. So I'm aware of the fact that last time that I ran a workshop with developers, which was in work, no one knew what a pen was, and I had to bring pens to the workshop. <laughs> So, I'm not saying your ideas book has to be a physical book like mine is, but it can be a digital book. Obviously, you guys spend all your time on computers and you've forgotten how to hold pens, that's fine. But make sure you have a book, make sure you have an ideas book to hand. Personally, I like Google Docs. I don't know if there's anything else that you guys like. Part of the reason why I like them is because they're collaborative. So, you can have a load of ideas and you can like, I don't know if this is any good. You can literally send your ideas book to your friend and be like, does this make any sense? And they'll be like, no, you're talking crazy, it's not an exploding kittens idea. So, collect all of your research into one space. This again goes with the Google Docs idea. So, there's loads of stuff that will inspire you, like I talked about before. Make sure all the things that inspire you, all that random shit, like it's playing kitten card games, are all in one space. When you come down to actually have to sit down to write your talk, you can troll through it and be like, oh yeah, that inspired me back in April. I totally forgot about that weird thing, so we couldn't make sure it's all in one space so that you can go back to it. It's important. Then you need to brainstorm the fuck out of it. So this is my favourite part of the process. <laughs> I really love brainstorming. I personally don't think we do it enough in our work, but when we do get to do it, it's really lovely. Brainstorming can literally be you putting what you think your title is in the middle of the page, or it can be going out with a drink with friends and being like, we need some monkey shoulder whiskey and we need to talk about this idea I've got. Brainstorming is great fun, embrace it. It is by far one of the best ways to come up with creative ideas to a bad problem. If it's something you're really stuck with, Add booze and a piece of pen and paper, that's going to be part solved, trust me. Brainstorm is really useful. And then, like I said, make sure you talk it through with someone. You guys are all part of a lovely community where you do get to talk to people. Make sure you actually do that. Communicating with people that you work with is so important. And make sure that when you talk it through with someone, they have a built-in shit detector. I can't remember what writer said that, but I think it might have been Hemingway, it sounds like Hemingway might have said. But they're like... <laughs> Every writer needs to have a built-in shit detector. It's exactly the same when you're coming up with an idea to talk about with people. Make sure whoever you're talking to can be someone that says, that's a fucking terrible idea. And you'll be like, you're right, mate, it is, let's make it better. And that's really important to make sure you have that person. Search your idea online. Oh my god. Literally people don't do this. It sounds like a ridiculous thing to say to a group of work developers. People do not search the shit online. Make sure you do. And when you do, if someone else has done it, don't worry about it. We'll talk about why that's not a problem later. Then, this is more of a writing tip, but it will help you immeasurably when you come to submit your talks, when it comes to things like Drupal cons. Make sure you write the title of your idea five different ways. The reason I do this is because I have to deal with things like uh, email remarketing campaigns. So we'll send out a load of emails and people won't open them. And they're like, oh, it's taking me. How do you write that email? Why haven't responded? 
Part of the reason why they haven't responded is because your title's a piece of shit. So you need to rewrite your title. Um, another reason why this is really helpful is because if you rewrite your title another way, you may actually end up approaching the idea completely differently. So make sure when you sit down to write your title, don't set on the first one you write about. It's pretty lazy. Make sure you do it five different ways. It will help you measurably, trust me. And most importantly, you have to make sure you actually write something. This is the bit that everyone struggles with, particularly writers. It is the least enjoyable bit about being a writer is writing. Um, you actually have to do it at some point. It sucks, but you do. So if you're about to submit a talk and you're like, I can submit a talk, it's months away, then you get to the night before and you haven't submitted the talk, which is what always happens. I literally wrote this two days ago. Then you need to actually write the bloody thing, it needs to be a file. So make sure you actually do that. So now we've looked at all the important things about coming up with your idea. These are some things you need to remember. So, like I was saying before, when you search your idea, don't feel it has to be original at all. I would argue there is no such thing as an original idea. If you're talking to a creative person, like there's nothing I've said that hasn't been said before. But like, it's really important you don't get intimidated by other people's ideas. Yeah, Bill Gates might have talked about the thing you're talking about. Who cares? I don't care about Bill Gates. It's not me. Your approach matters, not the idea. So don't worry about it. You're not Beyonce, and that's okay. The reason I'm saying that is because there's stuff that I've done. I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, that's another person did it, and they were really clever, and they were really smart. Don't give a shit, you're not Beyonce, it's fine. And, you know, seriously, like, it's totally fine. Uh, the most important thing is not that you're the best person at what you're doing, the most important thing is that you're doing it at all, and you're sharing it with other people. Don't feel intimidated by the Beyonce and Bill Gates as well, it's not worth it. Uh, focus procrastination is key. When I was writing this talk, I think I Googled Bill with his lyrics. I looked up what Hillary Clinton was up to today, maybe she had a salad, I don't know. Looked at her Instagram feed. It's really important because this is actually all to do with your inspiration again, and it can go an inspiration doc. So technically you're doing work when you're procrastinating. So make sure you procrastinate, it's not too much. Don't go crazy. And if you're struggling, think of your idea in a different form. So when I say this, obviously we're here to talk about doing talks, which is can be quite an intimidating thing. If that's the thing that you're really struggling with, think about it in a completely different form. Think about it as a blog post. Think about it as a 140 character tweet. Think about it as a short story. Think about it as an epic poem if you're feeling particularly fanciful. Anything, just take it away from the thing that it's meant to be and it will do something completely different. This is really helpful and really helpful thing to do actually because I write plays is to have two people talk about your idea that aren't you and someone else. Write two characters talking about your idea, and it will completely change the way you look at it. And you'll also be like, damn, I'm really good at writing dialogue, right? You really are. Like, go ahead and try it. But yeah, if you're really struggling, think of your idea in a different form. It will help a lot. Okay, we're going to do something now called brain writing, which means you may want to stop the live stream because it's been like 30 minutes. Sorry, live stream guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, Martin. Bye. <laughs>